Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to discuss upgrades to my advanced starship design that I had introduced in the previous video but then realized that there were a few problems with it. And the advanced starship design is actually essential to one of the stories that I'm writing. It, I mean, it's not a huge part of the story. It's just that I needed some way of getting people from Earth orbit to Mars orbit. And uh, I didn't want to do the starship thing with it directly landing because of various reasons. And it had to get to Mars relatively quickly. It couldn't be a 180 day trip. It needed to be able to get there a little bit faster, which means that it's going to have to have efficient propulsion. Uh, the best I could do, I figured, was to get ion engines and also NTP uh, for... It's not showing the extension of the solar panels here for some reason. Uh, this has been a problem that I had before that I thought I had fixed, but it seems like I have not fixed. So I'm going to bring it out again. Uh, this is the xenon tank core with the ion engines, and I've uh, decided to make that the root part in order to save myself from putting that together over and over and over again. Uh, but see, I extend the solar panels and now one of the changes that I've made is the solar panel arrangement up here. Uh, before, it used to splay out just like the radiators in the back here. And the problem with that is, this is supposed to rotate like this to generate artificial gravity. That's one of the things that is required for the story because I have passengers going to Mars and they need artificial gravity and they need to be comfortable and uh, you know not have their bones wither or anything like that we don't want any uh, muscular issues they have to get there intact and so we need some artificial gravity at least mars gravity's worth of artificial gravity and they need to get there faster than 180 days is the goal and so I decided that because it's spinning like this the solar panels wouldn't be able to track the sun unless they're in this orientation you can see here and so we'll check that the sun tracking is working but uh, uh, forgive me for having it being sort of asymmetrical I don't know if that causes any physical problems the solar panels are fairly light compared to the body of this thing I don't anticipate that as it's flipping around it's going to have some weird uh, inertial momentum thing where it flips wildly <laughs> onto another axis uh, I think it's okay. So, yeah, so as far as generating artificial gravity, that's fine. But the problem I've been having, and I thought I had nailed it, but it turns out I haven't, is when I retract the solar panels, the little thing that tells me that I can extend them again goes away. I don't know why. <laughs> why? Why does this have to happen? So, I can't extend them and retract them which is why I've made the xenon tank the root part. That is, that is not the cause, that's a workaround at the moment. So I made that the root part, but I'm going to reroute to this for now. And we're going to put in all the modules. So you can see it's a, sort of an empty bay without the bay door. And I had created habitat modules for potential peoples to float in. Visually though, this is oriented the wrong way. Actually, it should be like this. And it should be like this because when you rotate the whole thing like that, the this side becomes the floor in order to generate artificial gravity. So this becomes the bottom and then this becomes the ceiling. So we have little habitat modules like this and inside these modules you can sort of see there's computers here, there's a treadmill, uh, there's some storage and then sleeping berths, four on each level. Right now, but we could expand on that. We have this body and then the escape cabin. This is also essential for regular passengers, we want to give them the opportunity to potentially escape from this mess <laughs> if uh, something goes wrong. So this actually is independent for launch. It'll be oriented for launch. And everything else, uh, when, when it launches, it'll be strapped down. After that, it just goes back and forth between Earth and the Moon. Uh, sorry, well, Earth and the Moon could be possible, but Earth and Mars mainly. Uh, because that's why we need so much living space and so really this is only to launch them but 
we we don't want a separate vehicle to launch them in this case story-wise i figured that would be good to have something that they launch in and go straight there with if you want to launch them in a different vehicle and then transfer them to a transfer vehicle then probably you don't need this but it could be handy you never know when things is gonna blow up so it depends on when it blows up if it's on the way to earth or on the way to mars then that isn't going to be useful if it's already in orbit about around one of the two then that could be okay technically i should put parachutes on it but i won't so that's the idea that's the living space and Right now it's configured for 12 people, though in the story they'll need to cram in a little bit more. So this is a ion engine NTP system, and we don't have a huge nuclear engine. I just wanted this one, which is part of the NASA nuclear thermal propulsion architecture. And it's a mere 111 kilonewtons, so it would still take a long time for it to do any burns, but not as long as the ion engines. So that is the plus side. Other than that, I need to come up with custom Hydrolox engines for this. I don't have the modified vacuum RS-25s, but to be honest, the uh, modified vacuum RS-25s would not be good because they only have three ignitions. And even these Hydrolox engines I have here have only five. We need something with a lot more ignitions. Okay. So that is the advanced starship, and that's the idea. I'm just gonna check whether it can maneuver in space because last time I didn't even have RCS configured for it. And also that the solar panels can track. And if you have thoughts, you can give them to me in the comments. Oh, I'll test the ion engines as well. Okay, well, I'm just gonna cheat it into orbit for the sake of testing. And, of course, bring it into daylight. For some reason, we're starting off with a lot of waste and wastewater. I'll have to double-check that. Okay, well, let us deploy. I don't know why there's two curved net accesses there. Um, well, okay, we're pointed directly at the sun, so... Well, let me just make sure that we're controlling here and let's go normal are you going to track the sun you're not tracking the sun are you gosh darn it oh wait it's tilting in the wrong axis ah uh, <laughs> okay okay that's not right fine but but fine let's let's just Set that aside for now, I'll figure that out. I never get the solar panels right. At least we're recharging. Uh, it's gonna look weird pretty soon, but, but yeah, as the solar panels actually clip into the thing. Well, it is true that in certain times when we point prograde, the solar panels would not be able to track the sun, And but this is not one of those times that they should be able to, but uh, okay. Well, these engines aren't working. Try and restart again. Uh, I'm not seeing ion engine stuff going on. Now they're on xenon gas. Let me just change repellents. Nope. Well, that doesn't matter. We've got the xenon gas. It's being attached directly by radial attachment points. I don't know... Do they have a cross-feeding issue? It doesn't say that they can't cross-feed. So, what's what's the deal with my ion engines? I was trying to test whether they can work during time warp. That's the main thing. I wasn't expecting them to fail con uh, completely. We need those ion engines to work. I've used them before. They were in the Solar System Tourism series, but... Well, they're not doing their ion engine stuff, so why would that be? Let me try and fix the axis for the solar panel rotation. That could get dicey, though. Okay, back after fiddling around in Blender and Unity, and I think I've got the solar panel issue 
fixed. Let me just make sure. Okay, yes, they appear to be tracking the sun properly and recharging it properly. We should just probably boost up to a higher orbit before trying to use the ion engines, frankly. We should probably use the main engine for that. But, okay, let's say we are rotating in this direction where we're always going to get sunlight. Can the ion engines work? We'll just gonna do it radial. I'm gonna control from this end. I'm going to start these ion engines, obviously. Let's make sure. Okay, not those. These. Okay. So, can I get thrust out of you guys? We're we're like getting a whole lot of solar power. No electric charge problems. Okay, I need to turn off the RCS because that's changing our orbit and not allowing me to see. But yeah, it looks like my problem is with the ion engines. So I'll have to go back to the drawing board on those. These are just modified lackluster labs parts. They had worked before, uh, but they're not working right now. So... I mean, they should at least sort of throttle up and provide thrust, so I have to figure out what has gone wrong here. Power we have. We even have empty megajoules. Why do we have empty megajoules? I feel like something's blocking megajoule production, and the lack of megajoules is preventing us from getting thrust from these. That's my theory right now. But anyway... Uh, let's have this spin up and verify that it's going to... look like an artificial gravity ship that has solar panels constantly pointed at the sun. Let's have that part... I guess the radiators would occasionally... First of all, the radiators wouldn't be in... Oh... Is that all working right? Yeah, the radiators would occasionally block the solar panels. We don't need to spin that fast. Uh, by my calculations, we need to spin, th spin three rotations per minute, which is like pushing it a little bit. I would prefer two, but that's what we need to get the Mars gravity in the lower habitat level. The upper level would be where they sleep. So they don't really need the artificial gravity there because we're functionally, we're not reducing our bone loss or improving our muscle strength when we're sleeping. So uh, lower gravity is fine for the sleeping level. But as we get here, this level should be used for exercise and stuff like that, or just hang out. So that level, we want the highest gravity we can get at. Or actually, there's the possibility of using this body area underneath the cabin as well for exercise. And that'll have slightly higher gravity. I could make Starship even longer. Maybe we, sh maybe we should make it longer. That is a thought. Anyway, uh, this is the idea. It is still a work in progress for now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.